Hey, uh, good morning or afternoon or night, uh, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, have all uh, you here in this virtual seminar uh, promoted by innovation in the regional developing course at the Institute uh, of Economics uh, at the University of Campinas, or organized by Renato Garcia, Mauricio Serra, and me. Uh, well, before I start, I, uh, let me briefly introduce your guest, Professor Silvia Roqueta. Uh, professor Silvia Roqueta is an uh, assistant professor of the uh, economics in DCU uh, Business School in Iron. Uh, she got at, uh, her PhD in economics uh, at the University of Turin, where we met. Uh, during her PhD studies, Sylvia was a visiting research in the Center of, uh, for Business Research of the University of Cambridge. Her thesis uh, mainly focused on the links between the innovation and the resilience using different units uh, of analysis film and the regions. She was uh, working for the two past uh, years on the region uh, European Research Council project on the technology evolution in regional economics in the Special Dynamics Lab at the University College of Dublin. Uh, currently, uh, her projects focus on the regional knowledge space evolution, adaptive resilience, technology change, and the industry life cycle. The, the topic of uh, these presentations today uh, is intitulated the regional dynamics of the technology change, and the role of the organization network structure. Uh, Sylvia, thank you very much for uh, accepting our invitations, um, and you're very welcome. Uh, the audience is yours. Thank you very much for this. Thank you so much for your introduction, Solena. You told already a lot about me, uh, but what I can say that uh, today I will uh, in present a project that I develop uh, in UCD with my PIM teacher and with a colleague from Utrecht, Iris Vansenbog, that she works at the Copernicus Institute of Innovation, and another dear colleague uh, that she was working in UCD and now is assistant professor in Seoul, Ken uh, Kyung Kim. Before stepping into the presentation, uh, I wanted to introduce myself, but you did it already. But I can, you know, uh, briefly say again what I'm what I'm doing. So I'm assistant professor of economics at Dublin City University Business School, as Solene will say. And my interest, uh, my research interest in to I'm interested in contributing to a deeper understanding of the mechanism through which innovation foster prosperity. So not only using region as a unit of analysis, but also fair or maybe nation. And as well, uh, Solene said, my research focus on the geography of innovation, evolution, economic geography, and, and I put a particular emphasis on knowledge production, diffusion, and process related to technological change, economic growth, and prosperity. My past publication were mainly on resilience and innovation, as you can see from my record of publication here. I collaborate with uh, different research center and it was very nice. And that is what I did so far. What I'm interested in maybe also for co collaboration with you guys or uh, whatever is in the audience is I would like to dig deeper what are the relationship between regional technological profile and income inequality because after COVID in Europe, it's clear that there is an increasing inequality. And we are interested to see what can, you know, diminish this inequality, because there was some paper from, you know, uh, neoclassical economists that say 
new innovation uh, foster foster inequality, but they didn't classify which kind of uh, innovation uh, have an effect on income inequality. Also, I would like to see how the lockdown and the different, you know, ability to work from home change and transform the labor market and that and how that has an impact on the geography of innovation. And also, of course, because of the war and climate change and everything, we, I would like to see how innovation can foster an uh, environmental sustainable future. For, so, but let's focus on today's talk and let me briefly explain why I started to be interested in all these, you know, worlds of economic of innovation. So you can see here, there is a map of the patent intensity in the European region in 2001 and 2012. And, 12. and you can see that not so many regions gain patent intensity between the two periods. So the region that were high in patent are still the one that are still high in patent in 2012. So you, can, you cannot see so many changes between the two map, right? So what we can see and what is evident that innovation is sticking in place and is sticking in time. And but that is a big problem because every policymaker recognizes that innovation is the key driver of long-term economic growth and also regional dynamics of technological change define as the ability of region to develop expertise in new technological domain are recognized as the key or a driver of economic prosperity. So this paper would like to contribute to the literature to find out what are the pol possible policy mechanism to make a region more likely to branch into a new area of technological expertise and thanks to that, you know, make the region lagging behind to grow, right? So uh, what we know about regional technological change, it was an object of interest for in the geography of innovation literature for such a long time, you know? And we know exactly nowadays, what is the direction of a regional technological change? We know that regional technological change built incrementally, right, upon existing capability is cumulative past and place dependent. We know that thanks to an extensive literature that used the concept of relatedness both theoretically and empirically and proved that region are more likely to evolve or to generate new technology, industry, and skill in domain that are related to what is existing already. So what in uh, already, so for example, if we have a technology, the new technology will emerge in the, uh, the, uh, in the sector that are related to the uh, knowledge domain that are existing already in the region, as well is the same for sector and skill. However, in the long term, when you recombine sim to, to, to much similar pieces of knowledge, you can you know, be trapped into locking situation. So the literature found that technological collaboration is a mean, is a way to diversify, to diversify the regional knowledge base and so to make the region avoiding to be locked in and, in and trapped in obsolete technology. And so this technological collaboration have been recognized as a key driver of regional technological change. However, so far, not so many paper, not so many scholar, highlight or uncover the role of organization technological network within and across region in driving process of regional technological change. That is a big problem because it's really the geographical 
politically embedded organization that are deciding for the investment in innovation. So they are the one deciding to which direction, uh, you know, investing in innovation. And so basically they are the key actor of regional technological change. So scholars in economic geography, innovation and so on, by treating territories are as aggregate of black box have neglected the deliberate action taken by organization to push the region of residence toward new technological trajectory. This paper would like to contribute to this literature and would like to uh, address this key research question. So how do organization and their technological network influence regional dynamics of technological change? So do the organization have a key role in fostering uh, regional technological change? Not only organization, but the technological collaboration of organization inside the region and uh, between different regions. What we know already about the, uh, the, um, the links between regional technological change and technological network structure. We know from previous literature that local network, so region with a strong link uh, between a strong technological collaboration inside, inside the region, and so collaboration inside the region can facilitate closed club structure. The, this closed club, club structure basically is a, um, is a, is a, is cr creates a trust and a spillover between the people uh, and the, the technological actor and organization living in the same place. The fact that they live all in the same place they interact, they exchange, you know, uh, knowledge, make them more, you know, trustworthy, more, you know, more propense to uh, exchange knowledge. And this create a cohesion effect that positively impact the emergence of new area of technological expertise. Giuliani, Elisa Giuliani published a lot on this, and this make us thinking and conjecturing in our first hypothesis that a high share of regional internal technological collaboration contribute positively to regional technological change dynamics. However, reading closely this literature, we also find out that when region internal nature are too dense or they recombine knowledge that is too similar or cognitively close, this collaboration may block technological transformation. Why is that? Because if you always collaborate, exchange you know, information about knowledge with the same group of actors, with the same people, you may impede new input, new knowledge, to come into your network. So we put in the, the second hypothesis related to the regional internal collaboration. So our hypothesis 1B is that a less dense regional internal technological collaboration contribute positively to regional technological change dynamics. We know from the literature that not only internal network, so technological collaboration inside the region are so important for regional technological change, but also is so important to have connection outside the region. So international network has been recognized as crucial to bring into the region different sources of knowledge and to stimulate the emergence of new region-wide technological direction. These conjecture and these studies make us, you know, creating our second hypothesis. And our second hypothesis is that a higher variety 
of region external technological collaboration contribute positively to regional technological change dynamics. Our third hypothesis is the most novel and is related to the link between organization technological network and regional technological chain. And we, what we know about organization that technological collaboration for companies, for organization is a strategic decision that requires balancing between coordination costs, the, uh, the fact that they need to share external knowledge with somebody else. And if you share knowledge with somebody else, you have problem and risk and the risk of knowledge leakages, right? I'm a company, I'm, pro I'm a profit seeker organization. So I'm afraid of sharing my knowledge with somebody else because they might use the knowledge that I produce with some costs to make extra profit, right? So be in the focus of a profit-driven organization. And usually companies, organizations collaborate if they need to access complementary assets. They want to you know, take advantage of new technological components or they need to develop new learning capability. So what we see that organizations, so profit uh, seeking you know, companies are more careful in defining the scope and the intensity of uh, technological collaboration. And usually inter-organizational linkages occur through a limited number of intensive trust or routine-based collaboration and uh, inter-organizational alliances tend to recombine complementary knowledge. Therefore, if we want to understand their role on technological change, and we see that the evidence uh, of the company, uh, they tend to recombine more incremental knowledge than, than the one uh, that is pushing technological change, we can infer that organization, technological collaboration contribute negatively to regional technological change dynamics. That is a bit strong, and uh, but uh, be, be you know, focused that we are not talking anymore about regions or inventors like usually in the literature, but we are talking about organizations that are profit seeker, you know, they need profit. So they are in the homo economicus, you know, you know, situation. Why we think our paper is important because more and more we need to think that region are evolving complex system and their evolution is driven by individual and this individual are linked to organization and these organization are linked to region. So we would like to open the black box of complexity and all the layer that make up the regional structure. What we know that impulses for regional technological development can stem from, from the organization level and this organizational decision then translate into the organization network structure that we typically observe within a region. So this paper is important that because it's the first attempt to you know open the black blocks of complexity of regional technological collaboration and understand both the role of the region internal network, the region and external network, and the role of organization as a key actor of promoting regional technological change. How do we test all the hypotheses that I was, you know, uh, ex exposing to you so far? 
We construct a panel for 245 European 27 nodes to region. And these regions are observed over the time span 1990, 2016. Our database combines information from PathStat, where we draw information on applicant and inventor data on patents submitted to the European Patent Office. And we draw the information on the socioeconomic control from Cambridge Econometric and Eurostat. How do we measure the so-called regional technological change? We use, oh, sorry. We used the variable that has been so far mostly widely used in uh, the literature of economic geography has been used already by Dieter Kögler, Boschma, and some of the main scholars in the literature and is a variable called new technological advantages. This variable sum up all the new revealed technological advantages that the region acquired a time T across all the technological fields. So basically, it sum up all the new RTA, so the new revealed technological advantage that the region acquired in the technological class K. So imagine if we are in a region and a region acquired a technological advantage in mechanics, so we have a new RTA equal to one. If the region acquire a new technological advantage, also in chemistry, these new technological advantages sum to two. And if a maybe take a new and the region acquire a new techno reveal technological advantage, I don't know, in um, optics, these go to three. This is an example to explain better how we uh, the measure. And it takes the value of one, if the region in the previous period didn't have the revealed technological advantage in that field. So if the region had already the revealed technological advantages in that region, we don't count it. We count it just if it's novel because we want to grasp uh, a measure of uh, technological change. So how the region can gain expertise in new knowledge domain. Okay. And how do we represent the multi-level network? So we use co-applicant data. Why we use co-applicant data? Because they better take into account the organizational boundaries. And we use individual organization as the nodes, the interorganizational linkages between them are the edges, and geographical location is used as node attribute. Moreover, to achieve a representation of the organizational level network, for each period, we divide the interorganizational agency matrix into regional blocks according to the geographical localization of the organization. And the diagonal blocks represent the regional internal network and the off diagonal blocks, the regional external network for each region. For, for all these network analysis, then thanks to a principal component analysis, we got these four main variables that aim at, they aim at testing uh, our uh, four hypotheses. The first one, if you remember, is about the regional internal orientation. And how do we measure the regional internal orientation? By using a ratio between the number of regional internal partner to a number of regional external partner and uh, this variable aim at proxying the strength of the internal uh, network and is calculated at the organization regional level. Well, the second one that is uh, related to the hypothesis 1b about the density of the network, and it, you know density very well what it is, is the density of a network is 
if all the actor uh, of uh, the network are connected to all the other, we have a dense network. While if we have some people, some uh, actor of the network connected to few other and not all are interconnected, we have a less dense network. So these measure aim at um, measuring the density of the, uh, the network. The second, uh, the, uh, the, the third variable that is linked to the hypothesis to be two, sorry, not to be, I did a, a mistake here. And uh, second, that is the variable regional external concentration is a concentration ratio for the number of interregional collaboration to all the other regions. So basically what the aim and grasp. This region, I, I imagine, I don't know. Let's take my region of origin. I'm Italian, so let's take Lombardy. So Lombardy is connected only to Bavaria or is connected to Bavaria, Scotland, and I don't know, Paris. And so all, all these, uh, all the technological collaboration are directed toward only one external region or are more diversified. And this variable is calculated at the region level. The third one, uh, the fourth one that is the link to the third hypothesis is called organization closeness. And it's the ratio of single applicant to co-applicant. And is the one that aim at evaluating the third hypothesis about you know, the uh, role of organization and is calculated at the organizational level. Then, of course, because we say that this is so important, you remember at the beginning I told you oh, relatedness is so important and we need to take into account relatedness. So to take into account the, the, you know, the composition of the technological base of the region, we include the variable technological coherence that aim at evaluating the degree of complementarity or proximity between the uh, technologies that make up the regional technological uh, uh, structure. And then to take into account the breadth of the technological portfolio. So if the region has more or less technology in its you know, basket, we conclude the number of CPC classes and in order to counter, counterbalance a bit, you know, the problem of using co-applicant data, we use this variable that is multi-location inventor uh, to control for the firm that have a location or, you know, they say that they have the main headquarter in one uh, place but they source knowledge from other places. So to control for firm, the source knowledge from other region, you know, to sort of control for this problem that we have some time with applicant data. And more, why is blocked? No. And then in order to, you know, control for the regional economy size and their degree of dynamism, we include the variable GDP per capita. And in order to, you know, that patent are just produced, unfortunately, for manufacturing sector. So to control also for the region sectoral structure and so to control for the dynamism of the region apart from patenting, we include the variable employment in knowledge intensive business service. So, because you know, if you have a region, for example, like Dublin, that maybe is not, a, you know, patenting a lot, but he has a lot of knowledge intensive business service, is a significant, you know, signal of the creativity, of the dynamism, of the intellectual, of the, you know, uh, novelty production of the region. Let's go straight to our amazing, you know, uh, econometric strategy. You know, we need to, you know, make a sense out of all this rumbling. We need to order it and we need to give a direction. So we have the dependent variable. We have all our variable. Now, finally, we can test if the hypothesis that I mentioned before are validated by the model or not. 
And, uh, and we know that technological advantage, our depending variable is a count variable, but is over dispersed. So in, in order to take into account the distribution of our dependent variable, we use as a main estimation strategy, a, a negative binomial in a panel setting with spatial and temporal fixed effect. Moreover, uh, so why we use spatial and temporal fixed effect to control for, of course, for an, ab an observed heterogeneity, but in order to partially control for simultaneity and reverse causality, we lag all our variable by one period. And all our variable, I forgot to mention, are calculated in a three window time period. So they are calculated as a, an average of the value, I don't know, from 1990 to 93, from 93 to 96, so. So in order to avoid that, we use this, uh, we lack our variable of one period. And, you know, our first hypothesis, I and B are validated. Wow, amazing. So we have that region with a strong internal network are the ones that are more likely to develop new uh, technological domain. And the one also that are less dense, but are composed of close club of companies with intense interaction are the ones that are more likely to branch in into new knowledge domain. Let's recall our second hypothesis about external linkages. And we see here that region that have less concentrated internal linkages, so that are more connected, you know, to other region, you know, but not to one region, but to a broader set of other region are the ones that are more, you know, um, able to create new knowledge domain. And surprisingly, also for us at the beginning, that the region with more single applicants are the ones that are more likely to branch in into new knowledge domain. We test the robustness of our results using different methods. First of all, by using an alternative dependent variable that's called new invention, because we were afraid that our results were driven by the construction of the real technological advantage. This new invention measure is constructing by counting the number of patents in technological domain that were not present in the region in the previous period. I don't know, imagine that you have a patent with a code A538 and this, uh, and this link, I don't know, to create a new radio. And if this, you know, the region before was not passing in that field, we count one in this variable new invention. Then we use it as alternative model specification a Poisson with fixed effect and uh, with spatial and, and temporal fixed effect, a panel fixed effect by log transforming our dependent variable, and to take into account, uh, you know, endogeneity, the so called endogeneity that is the, you know, most careful thing for an economist, we use generalized method of moment. And all these results, you know, uh, validate you, these, uh, our previous, you know, uh, evidence. And you can see here, you have uh, previous, uh, all the, if you can see all uh, the sign and the significance is the same as the one we obtained before. Mm. You have also here, using Poisson and fixed effect that we have the same result. You see regional internal orientation as positive and significant, regional internal density negative and significant, external concentration negative and significant as before, and closeness positive and significant. 
And you see also with, G, with GMM, we obtain the same results. We don't care about the path dependence of the um, uh, new technological advantage, but we obtain the same results. So what can we say by summing up? That regions with a strong internal network are more likely to branch into new technological domain as you could clearly see from all our results. Also, the results related uh, to network density pointed out and uh, unveiled that uh, less dense and more fragmented internal technological nature composed of closed club of selected doctor with intense interaction increase a region potential to expand a new technological field. So it's more, you know, uh, helpful for the region, you know, to, you know, uh, make a, a group of organization collaborating with other group of organization rather than everyone collaborating with everyone inside the region. And uh, then region next to strong internal network need to have organization holding technological pipeline to other regions. So we need to keep collaborating with other region and the results of our analysis confirm the importance of a targeted set of interregional linkages. The most surprising results related to the single applicant is that, remember guys, we are not talking about innovation in general, or we are not talking about growth, or we are not talking about relatedness. We are want this paper I'm analyzing who are the actors that are able to break the frontier of the existing, you know, industrial world. So who is the, you know, Schumpeterian agent that is creating real, this real creative distraction, right? You know, who is the one that take, you know, the cost in order to create these, process of creative distraction. And they say our results and we had a region with a relatively high number of single applicants, network isolates, are more likely to develop new area of technological expertise. So uh, maybe because of the high cost of the firm to you know, sustain projects with high risk because you know branching in a new domain involve high risk of the innovation process so new regional technological advantages are more likely to result from the inventing effort of individual organization so why this paper is novel why we do, do we need to read this paper is that because our results Collaborate, uh, corroborate the results obtained with Inventor Network by uh, using co-applicant data in an international comparative sector. So we corroborate the results of the importance of an internal network that doesn't need to be dense and it needs to be, you know, um, uh, and the fact that you are, you know, collaborating with people of other region is so important. What our evidence adds to the what was not known before is that organization and single organization are also so important in pushing uh, regional technological change. And technological activity of individual organization are crucial to pushing forward processes of regional technological change. Also, our results suggest a new route to investigate the driver of regional technological change. By do doing what? By using a multi-level perspective, 
that use a cross-disciplinary approach that combine the finding of economic geography, social network analysis, and strategic management studies. From a policy perspective, I also think that this paper can give you know, several lessons for policy, for regional innovation policy to be implemented. First of all, identifying which network structure are able to support regional renewal processes is essential to design place-based policy as, as it was the smart specialization strategy in Europe. Moreover, the smart specialization strategy in Europe, in Europe was focusing uh, so much on the internal strength of the of the region without uh, knowing which are the actors inside the region that are the one that are pushing regional technological change and with also not you know evaluating the role of external collaboration so for region is not only important to focus on their strength but it's also important to collaborate to the region that can complement my knowledge, right? Not only to focus on what I know only. So this approach, so and the approach we take into this paper can, seen, can be seen as a step forward to consider both the key actor organization and the network link, linkages in, a, in place based uh, policy design. So we need, to underline the role of key actor organization, as well as the network linkages to design in a better and more effective way, a place-based uh, innovation policy. That was uh, the end of my presentation. Thank you so much. Any comments, suggestions are very, very welcome. Thank you. Should I stop sharing, right? Thank you, Sylvia. Um, thank you for your, your uh, very interesting uh, presentations and exciting presentation. <laughs> I had some comments for you. I thank think you so I had ju just two or three comments. The wow. first comment <laughs> um, <laughs> is related to your uh, hypothesis 2B. Oh. I really agree, uh, sorry, 1B. Okay. I really agree with you. Uh, true density may block it, the te new technologies, and I completely agree. But uh, especially in some places like um, uh, later places, uh, uh, could be uh, very necessary one critical mass for the uh, you create uh, you create the, the new technology. How you can uh, identify these? We could uh, try identify differences between the regions, the later re regions or an, another, uh, or you can um, create some different measures by. Um, um, a critical mass and one uh, uh, density because for me is of course I said I completely agree that too much density but especially in, in regions uh, later it's important you have some critical mass. This is this is region, you mean less developed region? Less uh, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. We should, we control partly for it by adding, you know, in the, yes, in the control, the number of CPC classes. Okay. You know that later in the, the technological control, we include the number of CPC classes. So we say, among other things being equal, if you have uh, the, the same number, you could control it by the number of technological classes that I have in my region. Thus, 
density have an effect. So we partially tackle it, but I will for sure revert to my dear code Iris that she, she uh, designed the, the, the network to say, oh, my friend Suelene suggested, what do you think? Uh, Okay. I think it's a good comment. And, and the, in the other uh, comment is, um, is in the same way, but for HyPOT3. Because in the same way, uh, you, you can think you, you need some um, a critical mass for the single applicant. So yeah. it would be interesting. You look and you, you combine uh, some measure, the uh, single applicant uh, and uh, multiple applicant, and how this, this could uh, improve uh, or not uh, the new technology, maybe. I don't know. I'm yes, just about, thinking about would it. You but how can I, according to you, should I interact the number of... Uh... The size of the company. We cannot hear you, Sue. So, Lenny, I'm you sorry. Are muted. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe you can uh, interact with the share the the single applicant and the multiple applicant. I don't. I'm. I'm not sure. Well, uh, yeah, we, we can try, we can try. But we can try, because I, I believe that it's important that the single applicant, but also the multiple uh, applicants. So maybe you you just uh, this, the captured uh, well this, uh, this idea, the, the, the complex uh, network with the or the organizations, I, I'm not sure. I just I think about this. The I think the, this is the last uh, comment, <laughs> but it's related your uh, dependent variable uh, because in Brazil, yeah, I try to use uh, I I'm, I'm use the, the similar measure, but in some case I lose technology in the previous period. For um, example, I had the the, region, uh, the relate uh, revelate. Uh, advanced in one period, and then when I look at the other, I don't have more. Yeah. Uh, this is we'll find some places, especially because Brazil, there is uh, places uh, there is no much uh, uh, patent. Pat patent, yes. Uh, but I don't know if you find some similar and how you can solve this problem if you. <laughs> so, what we did because we use three year time window. In, but so, this is solved this problem for you. So if you use three year time window, it means that it's a bit more stable. Maybe for three year, you have this technological advantage, then okay. it doesn't have it anymore. But okay. maybe you can use as a control, the same thing that I did to use the number of patents in new technological domain but because we don't want to see if the regional technological change is stable or not stable we just want to see if it's happening like if something new is coming to that then if it's stable not stable we don't know we are we are not really interested in this paper to see again path dependent and what we saw also that we didn't publish in this paper because it was too long already is that if you use the same measure and you interact with the crisis period, all the signs are the opposite. Oh. So you see, so co-applicant is important in period of crisis for the technological, you know, uh, change. Have you seen during the period of pandemic, the vaccine that is a sort of, the, you know, disruptive innovation, if you want to say the vaccine, you know, it was created by an alliance by BioNTech and Pfizer because it was a crisis. But otherwise, BioNTech or Pfizer would have been much happier to pursue their profits alone. That is the very, very interesting behind what yeah. we now we need to publish so the second version of this using the crisis story 
because we wanted to put it all together then in Druid and all the conference that he was saying that it was too long to put everything in one paper. No, no, it's too long. Uh, Renato? Yes. Thank you very much, Solene. Thank you very much, Silvia. Very, very interesting and very competent uh, presentation and, and uh, paper. Uh, I'm sure you publish in a very good journal because the paper is very interesting and very competent, technically very, very nice. I have some uh, questions, small questions. The first one is related to uh, all of them is related to one uh, issue that Sereni had already uh, make some reference is uh, on regional heterogeneity uh, uh, in Europe, in Brazil, in the United States, whatever. Uh, we have a very strong regional uh, uh, heterogeneity and then uh, I'm very worried when we, I'm saying, I'm saying we because we have this, this, the same problem when we are, we are applying this issue, uh, for example, to Brazil or to Latin America. Uh, this, uh, indicators uh, assume very different uh, patterns uh, across developed and the less developed regions. Uh, especially when we talk about uh, specialized regions, uh, normally less dense in terms of technology, in terms of industry, uh, against uh, diversified and more dense, uh, developed, uh, most, more developed regions. So uh, I think, so for example, I, I like very much your your dependent variable, the the the, the RTA, the, the new RTA, the specialization, the new specialization of regions. Uh, uh, but uh, I, I I think it's if if you be not very hard to find the new specialization, for example, in in the, in in diversified regions, for example. Uh, when we, we, we talk about uh, the, the leaders, uh, regions, leaders in Europe, uh, in, in innovation and technology, they are very strongly diversified. And then I think it's, it will be very hard to, to find new specializations uh, in these regions. On the other hand, for, for example, for less specialized regions, uh, for less dense regions, I think uh, the, 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 the indicator will be more, uh, more elastic, as I see. Uh, this is my first question. Uh, this is very interesting, and this, this is the problem. Can you hear me? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, because sometimes this computer, you know, even with one student. Perfect. No, no, I agree with you. And that was, this is the region, the reason, no, no, the region, the reason why we use the um, patent intensity in new technological domain uh, robustness check. And uh, we find the same results. So we were happy because when we mapped the first time, the reveal technological advantage intensity. Of course, it was not Paris or Sicily, you know, to get more new technological advantage, but was the Eastern European region that are they are less complex in terms of knowledge domain. And but if you also map the patent, the patent, you know, the new invention, you know, measure that we use, you can see that is more this uh, evenly distributed because you can see also London, Dublin, or, you know, Milan that are more, you know, old innovators. And what I wanted to say about the size, I'm concerned too, but in econometric, we, we include this variable GDP and, uh, you know, and the variable of technological intensity so these, you know, tamed down, you know, the difference. So we can say 
if we take into account the size, so if we control for the size, if we control for the, uh, you know, uh, the sectorial composition, and we say control also for the patent intensity, what this natural measure can tell us in explaining dynamics of technological change. So yes, it's not perfect. I would love in my, in a, you know, in, my, in the dream world of Sylvia to find some, you know, these famous instruments, you know, that you can instrument and solve this problem of endogeneity. But when you are talking about network and collaboration, how can we find some, you know, instrument to control for that, that are correlated with our, you know, collaboration, but not collaborate, uh, co uh, correlated to our dependence variable? That is a bit tricky, right? Yeah, completely, completely agree, Silvia. Thank you very much for your answer. My second question is related to, 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 to the main dependent variable, the, not the main, but the dependent variables related to networks. Uh, you have very interesting results regarding not only for the, the third hypothesis, but I think it's very, very interesting in your first hypothesis when you say that less dense networks are better for new specialization in the regions. Uh, this is a very, very interesting, and uh, I'm trying to, to, to think about, uh, since I, I read the paper yesterday, uh, what are the reasons uh, that, uh, why less dense? Because what we think is the, 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 the more dense is the, the, the network, more knowledge uh, agents can interchange, and then more uh, and, uh, it's, it will be better for 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 new specialization. I'm not talking as as you 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 warn you made the, the warning for us. I'm not talking about innovation, but uh, I'm talking about new specialization. Huh? So uh, my my question is how we can for what factors we can attribute to this, this result. Maybe, uh, uh, and I want you to, to hear you uh, and to, to give the opportunity for us to discuss and to, to think together about this question, uh, is maybe it's the, 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 not the, the, new the new knowledge is not relying on the networks, but in other, other uh, uh, forms of knowledge, uh, uh, local knowledge spillovers, or not it's exactly local uh, knowledge spillovers, uh, or even other forms of collaboration uh, out of the, 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 the domain of patents. For example, uh, maybe it is uh, uh, user, producer, networks, uh, maybe uh, university, industry, in the university and firms, collaboration, other forms. But, but I think it's very, very interesting. Huh? Renata, if I can tell you, I was thinking about something, uh, mm -hmm. about an example in my mind. But let's think together because I'm thinking with you. You know, in Ireland, I don't know if you know Ireland, until uh, 30, 40 years ago, it was one of the most poor country in Europe, right? Uh, and nowadays, one with the highest GDP and uh, productivity and everything and jobs and so attractive and so on, right? And especially, it was so poor, this area of Galway that is not Dublin, is on the other coast. And then the multinational arrived and the link between one company and the multinational, so it was not a de very dense. It was just two, you know, a link between two, you know, companies create this super medical device, you know, cluster. So maybe it's not with how many you are collaborating with, but the quality of the information that the people who are collaborating with can give you to boost technological change, maybe. I don't know. 
that's maybe a possibility. I don't know. Even because, for example, let's talk about Italy. Uh, in Italy, in the industrial district, everyone was collaborating with everyone, right? But they declined. They, they, don't, they are not doing technological change anymore. Maybe because there was this missing, you know, gatekeeper from abroad, you know, like the multinational or somebody that was coming to bring novelty into the network, you know. For example, the style district of Sassuolo that is so famous in the, you know, literature is dead, right? If you don't receive new input, unfortunately, lock in, collapse, ciao. And uh, that's, the, that's, I think, the problem. And I think maybe you have the same problem in Brazil somewhere, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's what we need to remind our, to our policymaker is okay to focus on the strength for within. But let's bring also knowledge coming from outside our region because... Otherwise, if we are always the same people talking about the same thing, what's the novelty, right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but my question is related to, the, to, the, to the, your last point. My third question is talking about policy. Uh, uh, I completely agree that uh, there is, a, a, with, with your conclusions, your policy implications, that uh, uh, Many policies for regional development lack uh, mechanisms, forms to strengthen network, especially networks not internal, intra-region, inside the region networks, but mainly uh, networks with local agents with abroad. Uh, and uh, I think that is very difficult to to, to for policymakers and and I think we we are not uh, uh, we don't have this, the skills we academics we don't have the skills to do this but I think it's a challenge for policymakers uh, because it's very easy for example to to a, a better development region to a better developed region for Paris for Frankfurt for Milan to 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 foster inter international or inter-regional inter uh, collaboration. But it's very tough when you find uh, uh, regions, like uh, what, what the literature say, like lag behind the region. Why? Because many times they are, they are locked, as you said, in some trajectories, in some te te technological and the organizational trajectories, and they, uh, they, they, they have a lot of, of uh, difficulties to, 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 to interact with, with, uh, with other agents, especially when you say they interact abroad, that there are problems of uh, the language barrier and so on. So I think uh, policy, I, I completely agree with your conclusions uh, 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 regarding policy implications, but uh, I have uh, no uh, skills and I uh, don't have cap capabilities to say how to 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 strengthen the national and the regional networks in less developed region. Uh, one one uh, possibility I think is to strengthen the the local uh, uh, let me say the local exploration. Uh, agents inside the regional innovation systems. For example, the universities, research institutes, uh, technological centers, maybe these guys inside these this, uh, this, uh, institutions can be like an antenna, uh, like an, uh, 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 a, a way to get this this knowledge mom what what do you think about uh, sylvia i completely agree with you now living between italy and ireland opened my mind on different things so as suelen and all in italy there are no academics that are non-italian right yeah zero 
not one, you know, zero. And in the faculty where I work here, we are from every possible nationality existing in the world, Korea, Italy, France, Japan, Brazil, you know, Saudi Arabia, everywhere. I think in like, like you said, making the key institution of this region open to receive knowledge from other places is a key, I think is a key, the key of success of being able to recombine knowledge, right? I can, I can see here that there are so many bars of different knowledge also, and, you know, even in terms of food, people is open to, you know, welcome every kind of, you know, cultural differences and these bring you know the mind to be open the technological trajectory to be you know more you know while i love so much my country but it's never been so open to welcoming higher education system you know other way of thinking education and i think that you can see that in spain you can see that maybe in Portugal less, I think, in Greece for sure. And if you can see, these are also the regions that are, you know, struggling the most. Because if you go to the Netherlands, it's like in Ireland. England is like in Ireland, you know. In France, it's getting more and more international. So maybe this collaboration from abroad need to start from the institutional level. Okay. Thank you very much. I don't know. Sorry, Sylvia? No, no, I don't know if I'm rambling, but it's an idea. Yeah, but, but, but I agree. Uh, we have, it, we have uh, some um, interesting uh, uh, experience uh, where uh, there is consortium between local universities, local research institutes, technological centers with the local entrepreneurs, many times small entrepreneurs and this kind of consortium uh, the the whole to get external knowledge, uh, knowledge is from these institutions, the uh, yeah. technological center. Then it, it's the role of the technological center not only to get foreign external knowledge, but to to diffuse to disseminate the the new knowledge among local 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 firms uh, because in, in many of these regions not only here in brazil but also in europe and italy and in finland and so on uh, we we will have in these regions problems with uh, small firms firms that don't have uh, too many capabilities to do this this kind of uh, to build this kind of network so i think it's a policy challenge uh, we, we we need to help uh, policy makers, but uh, it's not our task. What I found this hurting and a bit bad for from the innovation literature that I want to find a solution to is the region that start innovating in the 70s are still the one most innovative and most rich. How can we, you know, break this path dependence like i want them to be rich still but i want also the other to get richer how do we we create this new way of development is a challenge for all of us okay okay Silvia, thank you very much uh we have uh, some people in the in youtube uh, for us it's a pleasure for us to receive you not personally uh, unfortunately, yeah. but next time. Uh, next time. Uh, thank you very much for your webinar. Uh, the webinar will be available in YouTube, I think, in one or two days. Uh, thank you very much for the audience, for the audience that are online. Thank you for the audience that are uh, uh, seeing this webinar in the YouTube. Uh, we are finishing this year webinars on these subjects, innovation and regional development. And uh, I acknowledge, I thank again, uh, Silvia Rocheta from the University College of, Le of Dublin uh, to be with us uh, this morning. Thank you very much, Silvia. Thank you very much for everybody on the audience. Uh, see you next year. We will have a new uh, 
and the other other webinars on this subject. Thanks, Siva. Thank you. Have a nice Thank day. You.